Here we go again. Wednesday, the 30th of September, 2020. Time is flying. Just bumped into Simon and Reagan, just giving them a quick goodbye as they shut out the building. And here we are, myself and Jack, ready for tonight's Late Show. Really looking forward to it. There he is, Jack. How you doing, matey? I'm really good. Blessed hey. to be here. Yeah? Well, good. Brilliant. Well, I've got a little scripture for you before you start. You don't really need this scripture, but for any youngsters out there, any youngsters that are watching, um, here we go. Ecclesiastes 12 and... This is just for you. Remember now your creator in the days of thy youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Now, that's not, the, that's not to say that as you get older, there's no pleasure in life at all. Far from it. You, you see pleasure and joy in, in different ways and life draws, draws to it and whether it's different uh, advantages. But in general, as life does go on, uh, we get older, we get a bit more frail, things do creep in. Uh, in, into life that makes life a bit more challenging. So if there are any youngsters out there tonight that are wondering who's that old bloke with no hair and the young guy with the full head of hair, what are they talking about? Well, tonight we're going to talk about the Lord as our shepherd, aren't we, Jack? Um, yeah, our Christianity, I was about to say religion then, but it's not. Um, our Christianity is special in so much as our originator, who is God himself, uh, basically designated himself quite a few names, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Like the door, the gate, the good shepherd. He was a lot of things. And tonight we're going to focus on the Lord as our shepherd and the positives to that and the deep connotations which can really bring us some peace, you know? And I know there's people out there tonight that really need peace in their mind, in their soul, in their spirits, okay? And really tune in tonight. Bring us, give us your feedback, usual numbers. No, put them on the screen, because I can't remember them. I've still got the old text number in my head, Jack. And, um, you know. I have neither. So. <laughs> <laughs> you've got neither. All right, text me on my personal phone then, <laughs> if you've got any questions. There you go, 07860 Email live at revelationtv.com. There you go. Any little comments, little questions? Jacko, so you've been studying this subject for the last couple of days, just while your old man's been out on the driving lessons. And... Um, it was a start-up, mate. Why is it important that we can see the Lord as our shepherd? And what relevance does it have in our lives today? In 2020, when we don't need shepherds, Jack, do we? We've got cars, we've got emails, iPhone, WhatsApp, we've got instant communication. Do we need someone that walks about in a field with a stick and uh, keeping us under his control? Well, I was thinking about that earlier, actually. What exactly does it mean that the Lord is our shepherd? Because you get so used to just saying things like saying, oh, God is love and God loves the world. And, and sometimes you've got to think, what actually am I saying? Because sometimes you can just bypass your brain and, and just say it. Um, so I was looking a lot into Psalm 23 today. John chapter 10 we'll look at and a few other passages. But most people would probably say that Psalm 23 is their favourite psalm. Maybe Psalm 91 for some others. Um, so I thought it was worth looking into that. And it's also many people's favourite hymn. You know, the Lord's My Shepherd is one of the few songs that pretty much everyone can sing without the lyrics. So I thought, let's look exactly what does it mean that the Lord is our shepherd. And it was much easier for me this time because there weren't so many passages I had to look at. You could really just do Psalm 23, but because it's not the Bible study program, I thought I'd look at more of a range of scriptures and make it more topical. Yeah. But you said the Lord has a lot of different names, and I really like it here that he's our shepherd. Because if we read Psalm 23, verse 1... Now, Jackie, Psalms in the Old or New Testament? <laughs> oh, <shut up. laughs> it says in verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's not just some empty doctrinal statement there. He's saying the Lord is my shepherd. He's speaking from experience, um, from knowledge, and not just head knowledge, but experiential knowledge. And for David, that would have really meant a lot as well, because he was a shepherd. And the shepherd was like the last job you'd give to your siblings. He was the youngest out of all his brothers. So he got the job of being a shepherd. It wasn't one that um, commanded much honour. But he was a shepherd and he was saying that job that he used to do, that is what his God does. And it also says, the Lord is my shepherd. And there it, in your Bible, it's probably in all capitals, which means it's God's name, which is Yahweh or Jehovah or Jehovah, however you want to pronounce it. So it's a really personal psalm, and we can make it personal for us as well. We can say, actually, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, so it really means a lot, this one. 
Um, but another thing that really you can just say and not really unpack its meaning is in verse 1 where it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I'll just own up here, Jack, before you go deep. Go for it. Grammar is important. And that little comma just after shepherd or semicolon, whatever it is, is important. For years, Jack, I used to read this or hear it and I would hear this. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. I actually started thinking, hang on, I won't want him. This is no lie. <laughs> I, you know, I was walking with all those years and I could well, never quite work out yeah. why I won't want him, why I don't want him or I don't need him, you know? And then it dawned on me, <laughs> this is what happens when you only get six O-levels, um, grammar's important. Yeah. I shall not want. Now that really hit home with me, Jack, you know? It's almost like a therefore I shall not want. Yeah, yeah. Because if the Lord is your shepherd, what else do you need, you know? And I was thinking to myself, like, you could have no food or drink for the next couple of weeks and just die a slow death. But ultimately, it's like Jeremy always says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If yeah. you're a Christian, yeah. if the Lord is your shepherd. Yeah. If the Lord is your shepherd, you've got eternal life. You know, Jesus says um, that he is the Lord, um, not of the dead, but of the living. We're not just going to fade away. Our, our physical flesh might die, but our spirit carries on. And if the Lord is our shepherd, we just go to be of our shepherd as his sheep anyway. So ultimately, if the Lord is your shepherd, nothing else matters. Um, in other ways, they do matter because we're still here. You always quote the verse, um, occupy till I come, or in my translation, do business until I come. Yeah. So the Lord is our shepherd. If we died right now, ultimately it wouldn't matter. Mm. But because he's not taken us now, he wants us to carry on and live a life that does matter. So there's, there's so much insight into this and it was really worth meditating on. Yeah. Um, but I used to think as a kid, Okay, the Lord's our shepherd, I shall not want. Does that mean he provides everything for us? Yeah. And in a sense he does, but not always in the way we expect, you know. We might pray for something, we, we might want something, and the Lord doesn't provide it. And now is, is there a contradiction in scripture then, you know? What about the, the Christians who do die in poverty or who are killed for their faith? Where was the Lord there? But I think... You know, the Lord has a plan for everyone. We all know the verse about, you know, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And he's speaking of Israel, but, you know, it's a sovereign God. It applies to us as well. And if he's got a plan for us, he will give us enough to get through that plan. You know, he's not going to will us to do something that we're not able to do because we don't have the material um, things to do it or we don't have the spiritual depth to do it. He will build us up. He will give us the strength. And you quoted a verse recently that someone gave to you is, um, as your days, so shall your strength be. And, and I tell you who gave me that, Jack, do you remember? The wonderful Doug Harris. Oh, was it? Yeah, that was Doug. He, wow. he, he comforted me and your mum one day. We was in, in the studio and we'd had enough of pretty much everything. Yeah. And Doug came out of an absolute nugget from Deuteronomy 33, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure it's Deuteronomy 33? Sure. I think it might be Genesis uh, you know 49, when um, Let's have a Jacob look. blesses his sons. Wow, Deuteronomy 33, 20. We're going to have to get a Snopes fact check here. Do you know what? I feel like we've got Battle of the Jack Van Impies here. <laughs> Deuteronomy 33, if it's not there, I've got no idea. 33, 25 rings a bell. Let's have a little look. Uh, no, it's not there, Jack. Maybe it's 32, 25. You know what? I thought it was when Jacob blesses his sons and he says it to one of them. As your days. On a, answers on a postcard, guys. Well, if as, anyone can find it, feel yeah. free to send it in. As your days are, so shall your strength be. Please, we need to know where that is because it is an absolute great scripture. Oh, it is. <laughs> Deuteronomy 33, 25. Uh, your sandals shall be iron and bronze. As your days, so shall your strength be. Wow. There you go. Beautiful. Thank you to Doug for that. Do you know what? Doug's home, Jack. Yeah. Doug's home. He's, he's made it, you know. So carry on. Sorry, I've got a little bit... Um, yeah, but that is an important verse. Good one to think about. Um, because we just know that until the Lord calls us home, he'll give us enough to do whatever he calls to do. Yeah, I like that. And that is why he says, you know, in um, Matthew, I think, he says, you know, focus on the kingdom. 
you know, put the kingdom first and all these other things will be added unto you. Yeah. We're here for a mission. Yeah. Now, we're in the kingdom. Our mission is to glorify God and get as many other people into the kingdom as possible. He'll give us the means and the resources to do that. And it is all about praying according to his will, Jack, isn't it? Because I have no calling whatsoever to start a church, build a church, um, go and be a, a missionary in Zimbabwe or South Pacific. I've got no calling whatsoever for that. Um, the Lord in my life has given me a sort of a, a ministry of a son of Barnabas, a son of encouragement, someone that's walked through the fiery furnace for many, many years, and it's just an encourager. That, that's, that's it. Sometimes I wonder what my spiritual gifts are, you know, because I haven't got the spirit. I've got, I've got a little bit of discernment, and I'm a bit of, a, of the gift of encouragement. I'm able just to speak, hopefully, through my pain, a little bit of life into other people, you know. Um, mm. But as long as you're in your will, if, you know, for many people it is to go and start a church somewhere, go and be a missionary somewhere, feed the poor somewhere, et cetera, et cetera, you know. And as long as you're in God's will, his, your prayers will be answered according to your, his will, yeah. you know. And it says that somewhere in, in James or somewhere else, where it says, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. Yeah. I've no idea where that is either, but he hears us. Because yeah. uh, sometimes, especially when I was younger, you'd read a verse in the Gospels where it says, you know, pray and it shall be um, given to you. And, yeah. And but you've got to look at the context of the scripture at large and you see, no, it's only if God wills it, he'll bring it to pass. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, yeah, God does provide, um, but not always in the way that we think. Yeah. Yes. Do you know what, can I tell you how God provides, Jack? We're, they're putting out some, uh, Rev TV are putting out some little programs called God Day at the moment, going out in the morning. And um, I had a rather tough start to Monday morning. And in God's providence, my first person cancelled. And I needed, I needed some God. I needed some real help from the Lord, you know. And I come downstairs, grabbed a cup of tea. And who appeared on our screens? Pastor Derek doing a sort of an ex exegesis of Isaiah 12. And do you know what? It was amazing. I sat there. I actually rang him up afterwards. Um, no, I rang him up after the week before. He did an amazing one the week before. But Derek, if you're watching, your Isaiah 12 spoke to my spirit, quickened my spirit, and it was amazing because it was almost like the Lord provided for, our, for my need at that time, giving me time to actually go and watch the TV. My first person cancelled. And it was almost providentially set up Derek had a word, literally, what's, it, what's that word? Is it a word in season? A, a right, right now word. I can't remember the difference between rhema words and et cetera, et cetera, but it was perfect for me, Jack, you know? Mm. So God does know our needs, doesn't he? Yeah, I've saved his Psalm 91 one on YouTube, so oh, I'll watch that eventually. Psalm 91, I, I had to ring yeah. him up after that just to say that was, that was great, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Um, but Paul talks a lot um, about provision and contentment and if we go to Philippians chapter 4, from verse 12, we read, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So a lot of people have heard the last bit, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So if you're wondering, that is the context. It's about Paul saying, you know, I know what it's like to be poor, I've experienced that. I've also experienced being rich. You know, I've been hungry and full. I've had abundance. He's been at both ends of the spectrum. And that just highlights the fact that if you're poor, it's not God punishing you. It's not because you don't have enough faith. Paul has been at both ends of the spectrum. And he learned contentment. And that is really hard to learn. You know, I'm not speaking from someone who's, who's experienced severe poverty and is now really content. I'm just saying this is what the Bible says. Paul experienced it. And so you wonder, you know, where was the Lord's provision there? But we know that Paul kept going, even though he'd been in prison, he'd been in poverty, he kept going. His mission was eventually complete. And he says, you know, I've run the race, I've reached my goal. And then, you know, he knew the Lord was going to take him soon. Notice he had learned to be content. Mm. So even the great apostle had to go through a process. Yeah. You know, we look at some of these Old Testament, New Testament saints, we think, oh, they had it sorted from day one. You know, but they didn't. They were on a process, weren't they, Jack? You know, just like all of us. Here's a little psalm that might um, just speak to your spirits. Psalm 37, 25. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. He's talking about money here, I think. Nor his descendants begging bread. Okay, 
So that is, I think that's David there, Psalm of David. Been young, been old, and he's talking about the faithfulness of God in so much as provision throughout his whole life, you know? Yeah. And one last thing on provision is it's not simply material provision, it's spiritual provision as well. And if we flick to Revelation chapter 7, um, go to verse 17, it says, For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that's talking about the saints who have gone to be with um, Jesus in heaven. It says that the Lamb will be their shepherd. Yeah. He has provided us a way to heaven, to the throne. And you know, we've spoken before about how God is so holy. How is it that he lets us anywhere near him? Because you know, by nature, we are sinners and we just deserve eternal hell. But it says here that the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And I said earlier how the shepherd wasn't some high up role that was greatly respected. You know, the God of all the universe has become our shepherd and has allowed us into his presence. And it really, you can see here, it, it, it sounds like Psalm 23. He will guide them to springs of living water. Um, you know, that we, we'll see that in Psalm 23. Beautiful. Um, so we can thank God for his spiritual provision of eternal life. Beautiful. Great stuff. If you want to text an email in, you're more than welcome. Hi lads, for me the Lord is my shepherd, it is key to my life. It is my life. Left to myself, I'm not good for doing the right way. I have fallen in love with the Lord Jesus, so letting Jesus guide me is a pleasure and very wise. Only good is given to me as I walk his way. Life is so full and amazing with the Lord Jesus as he shows me my best life. Happy days. And that is from Kev. Cheers, Kev. What a lovely little text. Mm. Beautiful little text. Got one here from Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, guys. I'm so grateful that the Lord is my shepherd. Many pains and sorrows in my life were known by him, and in his timing, the results of this was healed at just the right time. I've been guided over many obstacles, often without realising he was there. Oh, dear, that's a heavy line, isn't it? Often without realising he was there. A sheep has its head on the ground and only sees the grass, occasionally feeling the nudge of the staff to go into the right direction. The sheep, even with its head down, could hear the voice of the shepherd, there's John 10, but had to obey to be able to go to safety. Don't struggle and get angry with the thorns. The shepherd is watching and ready to move you to safety, etc. Blessings from Susan. Go on, Jacko. Next one. Brilliant. Um, if we go back to Psalm 23, in verse 2, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And that really speaks of rest. And where it says still waters, another translation is waters of rest. It's ah. to do with rest. And there is that famous passage in Matthew 11. Um, let me quickly flick there. In verse 28, we read, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus' desire is that we have rest. But the only way to have true rest, lasting rest, is if Jesus is our shepherd. You know, if we come to him and um, he wants us to give our burdens over to him. And here, like, the primary meaning is spiritual. It's like we said earlier, it's not just about material in the Christian life, it's about spiritual. And we're supposed to cast our burden of sin onto him. And I have that picture in my mind of John Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress. And there's a bit where he's, he's carrying this massive load on his back. And there's quite a few films of it on YouTube. And you can just see it where he finally gets rid of it, what's weighing him down. Yeah. And he, now he's just free. And that is really what Jesus wants us to do. And I, it's our sin debt. We're carrying our sins, you know, before we become Christians. And that's a load that no one can bear. And Jesus wants us to have rest. Give it to him. And it says... Um, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So we're, we're giving him our burdens, but we're also yoking ourselves to him. And the Bible says, in talking about marriage, don't be unequally yoked. And we're supposed to yoke ourselves to Jesus, because when we yoke to him, we're with him. You know, we, we yoke ourselves to him by faith. And, you know, we know that we're saved by grace through faith. So when we believe, we become attached to Jesus. His blessings are ours. He takes our burdens and we can finally have rest. 
a clear conscience and we know that, yeah, we're not condemned. Jack, what is a yoke? Apart from not an egg one, please. <laughs> a yoke is, um, it attached animals together, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so if you are unequally yoked, imagine like a little donkey attached to some like big cow, it just, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, so that's why, you know, about marriage, you have to be equally yoked, you know, a Christian with a Christian. Um, that's what a yoke is. Amen. I hope right. so, anyway. I'm pretty sure it's that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, as far as I know, yes. The, it's the wooden thing that went across the two animals and they both dragged it at the same, at the same time, yeah. Yeah. Around their necks and their shoulders. Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. So if we're in Christ and in him, fully surrendered, um, our spirit man should flourish and we should be able to walk okay, you know? Mm. Do you know what? This... This whole Christian walk thing, Jack, it is a walk, isn't it, you know? And yes, positionally, we're forgiven, righteous, holy. We've already made it. We're seated with the, at the right hand of the Father with the Lord, you know? And so positionally, it's all done. But this walking out is a different kettle of fish, isn't it, Jack, you know? And I yeah. think one of the best expounders of the Christian walk was, was Witness Lee, um, the Chinese guy from... I mean, he died about 1994, I think, but so he was around for all the 1900s. And um, he had a lovely way of describing the life of Christ being infused into us and us walking out this Christian life, you know. It's, um, yeah, witnessly, I really highly, re highly recommend, him. Met, recommend him. Evening, Mark and Jack. It's always a pleasure to have you both discussing God's word. The references to shepherds and sheep are so numerous in the Bible. My favourite would always be Psalm 23. The Lord is indeed our shepherd. In Psalm 78, 52, it states that then he led out his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. In Psalm 100, we are the sheep of his pasture. How about that, Jack? Mm. Sheep are gentle creatures who need direction. And as I recall, in the absence of a shepherd, they needed a goat. Little poem here from Anita. The Lord is our shepherd, we are his sheep. So believe in him for what is sown, we reap. Put on all your armour for the word, for in the word there's power. Our Lord will soon return to us, but we don't know the hour. So trust in him and let him lead his flock into the light. We have his word, we have our faith, and we must stand and fight. Our Saviour has redeemed us, and we should have no fear, even though we know that now the end is drawing near. God bless you both and everyone at Rev. Anita. Thanks, Anita. Brilliant. Next one, Jack. Brilliant, yeah. And quite a few people in their emails have mentioned that being led by the Lord that did there, I think. And one important point is guidance. And we read in verse 3, it says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And there's a verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. It says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Mm. And we see that here. He leads us in paths of righteousness. And you said correctly that we're already righteous. We're already seated with Christ. It's already done. And that's our status. But how well do we live that out? And... That's a massive challenge, and that's one where you'll, you'll never be perfect, but God will, over time, gradually make us holy. And he says quite a lot, especially in the Old Testament, he says, be holy, for I am holy. And we did a show on the law. That was the point of the law, to make them holy, a holy people separate from the world. And how does he guide us? That's a question we've got to ask. Um, and the Bible answers it as you can imagine. And we read in Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So if you want to be guided by the Lord, and if you want to hear from him, his word is the answer. Yeah. And a lot of people are waiting for a, a sign or for a dream, and God can do that. You know, in, in Acts 2, we read in the last days, your young men will dream dreams. But primarily, God speaks for his word. So we can always listen if we're willing to put the time in. And it also says that he does that for his name's sake. And we mentioned, I think it was last week, that God is a jealous God. And it also says that he's jealous for his name. And we read in Psalm 138, verse 2, it says, You have exalted above all things your name and your word. So God's name is holy. God is exalted. He is high above us in the heavens. And because we're his sheep, you know, he's taken ownership of us and he's taken responsibility for us. Yep. So if we live a life that honours God, God gets the glory. And that is why I think it was Moses who petitions God, you know, God, 
was angry with Israel and wanted to be done with Israel. And he says, but what about your name, you know? How will people look at you? Oh, you failed as a God. So that's why he cares, you know, how do Christians look? And we're never going to be perfect, but you can see if we're living lives that honour God, yeah. he gets glory. Yeah. So that's why he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. John Jack, it's almost as if, yeah, me often you say this, that we're ambassadors for the Lord, aren't we? Yeah. That's what we're representatives in this fallen world for our Lord, you know? And it's like, when I go out, when I go out driving instructing, you know, I often pray, Lord, make me the best ambassador of doing this job. Because sometimes you think to yourself, you know, um, all the heavy stuff's going down in the world. Why am I driving about teaching junctions and emerging left and right and roundabouts, you know? What, what good's that in the end time scheme of things? And I think, well, hang on a minute. No, I'm a witness to my Lord. I do have some really deep chats, actually. Some people really do ask some in-depth questions, you know? So whatever you're doing, God's got you there for a purpose, you know? Um, despise not the small things in the beginning. Wherever you are, God's got you there for a purpose, for a reason, and... Um, yeah, you don't, listen, it's not all about being, all right, I know me and Jack are sitting here every Wednesday night on your TV screen, but listen, it's, it, wherever you are, be that ambassador for the Lord, whatever you're doing. Wonderful, isn't it, Jack? Yeah, and I, I remember at university, we had a baptismal service, and there was a girl there who had not been a Christian long. She knew barely anything about the Bible, and even though she'd only been a Christian for a couple of months, she'd already evangelised someone, and got someone to church, and that person was really interested in the things of God. And I just thought, isn't that brilliant? Someone who's not had training, doesn't know all the answers for apologetics, but even they could reach someone. Because if you're saved, then you obviously know how to be saved. You, know, you obviously know the gospel. So whoever you are, if you're a Christian, you have enough to go out and reach people, wherever you are, in the workplace, in the park, whoever you meet you have the resources. You don't need to know all the answers. No. Um, so I was really encouraged by that. And especially because I'd done a lot of evangelism that week with all the deep apologetic arguments and there was no fruit from it. So yeah. God can really use anyone, um, however much they know. Wonderful. And ultimately, it? it's not about us, you know. Look, it says um, Zechariah 4, 6, isn't it? Not by a power, not by, by a might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Absolutely. So Jack. God will work through us. Absolutely about faith working through love, Galatians, as Brother Jeremy used to say, you know. Mm. Got some lovely little text here, Jack. Sandra, thank you so much for a lovely, encouraging text. Hi, just to say this programme is such a blessing to me, um, uh, me and my husband. Jack has the wisdom of the Lord, which is one of the greatest gifts I pray for you both. God gives us gifts in different times of our lives. He gave me so much peace when I went through breast cancer. I was never fearful. Isn't that what? That is a gift. Mm. I was never fearful. Wow, <laughs> you're a bit more advanced than me, Sandra. Um, God bless you both greatly. God bless you from your sister in Christ, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Lovely. Beautiful, beautiful. Andy from Coventry. Hello, Andy. Uh, evening, Mark and Jack. Nice to see you both back on Rare, providing us with your wisdom. Jack is ever so mature for his youth, youthful age. I wish I was young again. I, I, really wish I, I really wish I'd met the Lord earlier, Jack, you know? So you are blessed, you are, you, yeah. you met the Lord. Better late than never though. Oh, better, <laughs> better late than never. That's very true actually, and very wise. When I was his age, 21 years ago, I spent most of my time clowning around. The Lord is my shepherd is one of my favorite verses. A bit like the old classic, John 3, 16, is the verse that I always use, as it's very true. We are running the race. Blessings from Andy in Coventry. Uh, Mike says, you were speaking about our mission. I just came across this in a book I'm reading about the life of Duncan Campbell. Here we are, here's the, the quote. We are the ambassadors of eternity in the courts of time. Oh, I need to read that again. We are the ambassadors of eternity in the courts of time. That was Duncan Campbell that said that. How true this is for each of us for such a time as this, Mike. Thank you, Mike. How heavy is that? For such a time as this. I feel like a bit of an Esther quote coming on there, you know? Could she be there in the courts of the king for such a time as this? We need people to step up. Time is running really short, you know, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. You know, things are getting really heavy. What's the next one, Jacko? Yeah, the next point is about protection. And if we go to verse four, we read, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And it's interesting here that He's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And a lot of people watching will feel like they're in a really 
miserable situation. They'll be saying, Lord, where are you? Lord, why am I so low? Why am I in this situation that seems hopeless? But we know as Christians, that's not our final destination. You know, if you're an unbeliever and you're unsaved, your final destination is misery. And that's such a horrible thought. That is why, you know, we're here. That is why people go out evangelizing. But for a Christian who's reached their all-time low, you know, it says valley of the shadow of death. They're not in their high points, they're at their lowest points. Yeah. But they're walking. He walks through the valley of the shadow of death. It will eventually come to pass. And we don't always know how long it will be. Sometimes it lasts the rest of our lives. Sometimes it lasts a short amount of time. And then we look back and we say, Lord, thank you for delivering me from that situation. Beautiful. And we see that loads in the Psalms. You know, often it says, Lord, you know, why have you forsaken me, left me here? And then at the end of the Psalm, it's like, Lord, I praise you for you've delivered me. Um, so we always hope for that. Um, but delivery definitely will come at some point, even if it's when the Lord takes us. Do you know what, Jack? It reminds me of my little old favourite verse. I know I say it every week. What is it? Habakkuk. Oh, well done. You do 3, listen. 3.19 or something. Oh, you do listen to what I'm saying. Oh, well done. You don't just shut down. Habakkuk 3.19 in the Amplified. About walking. Keep walking. Um, I will make your feet like hinds feet. I will make you to walk, not stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon your high places of trouble, suffering and responsibility. All right? Just there's a little message there for someone. Just just keep going. Just mm. keep walking. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's in the Psalms. It says somewhere, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And one person who we see that with is Joseph in the Old Testament. And I'll be doing a God Day about Joseph. Um, and I've prepared that. Um, so stay tuned for that at some point, whenever that will be. Yeah. But it was my favourite one preparing because there's so much depth in everything it says about Joseph because he was a type of Christ. And he's a, a weird one because with most people in the Bible, it really emphasises their sin. You know, we see the sexual sin of David, uh, the lying and the cheating of Jacob. But with Joseph, we don't really see that side of him. He comes across as a very righteous person. Yet he suffered so much. The righteous do suffer. And there's some people who think, you know, if you have faith, then you can just name it and claim it and have your best life now. But that's completely wrong. And we read in Genesis 39, verses 20 to 21, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. And that was just after Joseph had refused to sin. He had refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife, and he had fled, and he was falsely accused, and now he's in prison. But the next bit says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. So even if you're in prison, even if you are in the valley, you're in your lowest point of your life so far, the Lord is with you and the Lord wants to show his steadfast love. So whatever you're going through, hold on to that, hold on to God's promises because our God never leaves us and never forsakes us. Amen, Jacko. I can't remember where it is, but you just quoted, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And I just wanted to let someone else know that the next line after that, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Mm. All right? Keep walking, keep going. The Lord delivers us from them all. Only Jacko. And it also says, um, I will fear no evil. And now if the Lord's your shepherd and he's a sovereign God, then we know that he's in control. So when we go through the valley, he's with us. When we go through good times in life, he's with us. So whether that evil is poverty or illness, or whether it's a person, whether it's persecution, we don't have to fear. And there's a famous verse that we say all the time, Romans 8, 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. So even if you've been thrown into prison, even if you know, you're about to be killed for your faith, all things work together for good. And that's easy for me to say. Of course it is, yeah. I'm not going through my lowest point at the moment. Yeah. But the Bible says it. It's true nonetheless. Yeah. And Paul said it, and he certainly went through a lot. Yeah. Amen to that. Got some lovely texts coming through. Our little friend Sally. Thank you, Sally. Um, I love this verse, dear Mark and Jack. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100, verse 3. God bless you both, and the viewers. Thank you, Sally. Lovely stuff. Brilliant. She's always happy, isn't she, Sally? Sally Richardson. Yeah, every time we see Sally, she's always yeah. bubbly, isn't she? She's always effervescent. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You've got something that I haven't got, Sally, I tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm often not very bubbly. Dear Mark and Jack, while in Bethlehem in the shepherd's field, uh, I saw the shepherd leading his sheep in single file. He was at the very front instead of driving the sheep at the rear. What an example to us to follow our Lord. This seems to be common in Israel. Love your program. Blessings both. Um, uh, I can't see that. Blessings both. Something. Oh, and all at TV. Duncan in Inverness. Thank you, Duncan. Bless you. Absolutely bless you. Wow. Next one. Hi, Mark and Jack. It's such a blessing to have you both. A dad and a son leading a little Bible study. We watched Jack's program the other morning. I suppose that's the God one, isn't it? The God... About Noah, maybe. God day. Probably about Noah, hopefully, yeah. The other morning. And what great presentation skills he has. No shouting, no waving of arms. Just straight teaching on the scriptures. God bless your ministry together. His anointing is upon you. Yours in Jesus. <laughs> Marianne and Leslie, the Cheltenham Fan Club. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That is so lovely. My, that is I really, really learned my preaching method from the meetings that Sally Richardson held because yeah you know i've i've listened to such a wide range of preachers yeah so i didn't want to just become like one and if you just listen to one you believe everything they believe yeah so listen such a range but i've listened to people that shout and scream at you but at their meetings they literally just talk to you and explain the scriptures and i thought that's the best way just be yourself just talk yeah um at least i preferred it like that i couldn't bear all the shouting and you know what, Jack? <laughs> each to their own but the moment Someone shouting at me and screaming and running around on the podium. I'm off. Mm. I'm off. Straight to the kettle, cup of tea, turn it over. Yeah. No, no don't, you don't need to shout at me. Just talk, you know? Yeah. Just talk. I mean, I, lo I love a bit of John MacArthur, Charles Stanley, Brian Bros. I love Perry Stone because he, he brings the scriptures to life, especially the prophetic ones, and he's, he is hilarious as well. Yeah. David Paulson. David yeah, such Paulson. such a nice way about him. David Paulson. He's almost like a... just sends you off to sleep in a nice way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in a really nice way, full of the word. Calming voice, a yeah. Calming voice, you know. And he started Kentucky Fried Chicken, didn't he? <laughs> he does look like the Colonel. He does look like the Colonel. He studied agriculture. Who, David um, Paulson? At Durham, so maybe, I don't he know. Never. Is, is that anything to do with shepherds? That's, <laughs> That's the really, closest thing, maybe. He does look like the Colonel, doesn't he? Yeah. And he's another one. Doug's made it home, and David Paulson's made it home. Do you know what, yeah. Jack? That's all I want. I want to be found faithful to the Lord uh, to the end of my life. Yeah. You know, and I just, that's all I want. I, sometimes I want to fast forward my life so that I can quickly get there, you know, and not have to go through all the, all the trials and tribs, you know, but um, that's all I want to do. I want yeah. to be found faithful at the end. I want him to say, well done, Mark, good and faithful servant. Yeah. Even though some of your jokes were a bit dodgy. And, you know, and even when we do mess up, we read, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to talk about this verse, but it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So... No one's perfect. We will mess up loads Absolutely. along the way, but his goodness and his mercy follows up. I kind of think about it as we're walking through a kitchen with muddy boots and we've got all these messy steps we're making, but then someone's just behind us scrubbing. Just scrubbing, <laughs> literally. Yeah. So I think his mercy just follows us, cleaning up after us, yeah. Do you know what we just mentioned? David Paulson sending us to sleep in a nice way, full of the word. Mavis talks about going to sleep. Hi, Mavis. Hello, guys. Listen to this, Jack. Ready? Mm hmm. I am an 86 years young, worshipping child of God. Wow. Every night I remind the Lord that he is my good shepherd and oh, maybe you've got this right. And I go to sleep full of absolute peace. Mm. Wow. He will keep me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on him. Isaiah somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Always say somewhere if you don't know where it is. I yeah. think it's Isaiah 26 free. Hallelujah from Mavis. Big smiley face. Mavis, do you know what? Keep going. I want that, Jack. Actually, I do go to sleep quickly, don't I? Like, that is what I um, you know, we've got an insomniac in our family, and I'm, I'm glad it's not me because I literally couldn't cope. So mm. if you do are able to get good sleep out there, that is a blessing, a real yeah. blessing, you know? Thank you, Mavis. Lovely little text. Lovely little text. A shepherd in David's time led his sheep and the sheep knew his voice, I love that, John 10, 27, and followed him, which Jesus spoke of in the Gospel of John. Jesus says that he lays down his life for his sheep. So, so good to know. We have to listen and follow. God bless. Thank you, Glenda. Beautiful text. Absolutely lovely. Squeeze another, another quick one before Jack carries on. Getting through them tonight. Evening, Mark and Jack. Love watching your program. Could you tell me which version of the Bible you read Ecclesiastes 12 from? Um, Angie, I was in New King James. All right, New King James. Um, 
I was following along with mine, which was slightly different, and I'd like to know which version it is, please. God bless. Uh, Angie, New King James for me. What do you read, Jack? I read the ESV. Yeah. Um, another good one is the Christian Standard Bible. That's the one you just bought, Mum, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because that is a really easy one to read, but it's also really accurate. Um, where some it's just either accurate or easy, but this is both. Yeah. yeah. Good on you, mate. Brilliant. Um, right, carry on, Jacko. What's your next one? Um, so just to finish off protection, yep. uh, one key bit is your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And there's quite a lot of different opinions about what that means. But before I explain, I'll go into a verse that says, Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in the faith. So we know that we've got lions and wolves around us, the devil and his angels attacking us. And um, one of the functions of the rod and the staff is to protect the sheep. And I'll quickly go to a verse in 1 Samuel, because I think it explains really well um, what God does on our behalf. And we see it through um, David, because I said earlier he was a shepherd. So it's in 1 Samuel 17, verse 34, uh, we read, um, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. And that is exactly what Jesus does for us. When the devil tries to grab us, Jesus comes and destroys Satan, destroys his angels. And ultimately, the death blow was at the cross. And someone said in an email, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That was where the death blow was. That was where our salvation was, at the cross. Um, that is how good a shepherd was. It says he is a good shepherd. and all, We don't always understand how good God is, but if we look back to the cross, our shepherd laying down his life for his sheep, for us, we see, wow, our God is a really good God. Yeah, good stuff, Jacko. Darren from Reading has got a good question here, Jack. What's your angle on this? If God gives us the tools we need to complete his missions, uh, does that mean that those children who are abused are given the tools to deal with that? Or those people who are born in North Korea and die due to poor harvests and evil government? How has God given the people, these people, the tools they need? So basically, we're talking about the effects of sin, aren't we, Jack, in this, in this fallen world? Yeah, and those under heavy, heavy persecution. There is a verse, it might be in James, where it says, there is no um, temptation that has overcome you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And... I think in the context, it's not, it's not necessarily just about um, sin, but trial. Sometimes the Bible uses temptation like that. And it says that is not common to the saints. So there are loads of saints under heavy persecution, but God gives enough grace. And, you know, we read here, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. So I think whatever the situation, even if it's something so horrific, I can't even comprehend it myself. God's grace, his mercy is there to help us through. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the problem of sin. Read some C.S. Lewis stuff, Darren. It's some good stuff, you know, trying to address things like that. I couldn't begin to address it. Um, it's, it's just far too deep. I don't uh, claim to have any of those sort of answers. But we do live in a fallen world, and what would seem ridiculously unjust is totally unjust. But I think Genesis, Genesis 18, 25, I think God says, uh, or someone says, a rhetorical question, shall not the God of all the earth do right? Um, and listen, Hitler was out there, persecuting and murdering millions. Um, Watchman Nee, uh, Witness Lee's uh, like father figure, he spent, was it the last 20 years of his life in a, in a prison cell? Yeah, something like that, something yeah. Something like that. Um, you know, you've got Christians in, in northern Nigeria being burned and hacked to death and stuck in places in the Sudan where Christian people are being stuck in metal containers and being left to burn to death. That's why we're saying this isn't your best life now, okay? This is where what we do, Darren, we try and put on a, an eternal perspective, okay? One and one isn't always two in the Bible. The Bible is very honest and will give you basically the good news, the bad news and the ugly news. But if we put our transient heads on and don't see that this life is all there is, which if you don't believe in God, this is all there is, um, actually, God's grace really is sufficient for you. And that sounds easy for me because all I'm doing all day is driving around in a Volkswagen Golf giving driving lessons. So I'm not in a tin can yet. But persecution is coming, coming to the masses uh, on a big scale. And the Lord actually said, blessed are they when you, they persecute you. So actually, 
I can't get my head around it, but there is a place of blessing when you are persecuted. I hope in some way, Darren, that does begin to unpick that one. Um, Angie says, uh, Mark, you have a wonderful gift, inspiring and ministering to us through Rev TV. Look forward to Wednesday evenings. You and Jack are a blessing. Thank you from Angie. And lovely, Jack. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Angie. Really, really appreciate that. Really lovely. Please pray for me and my family in the UK and Ireland. God bless you, brothers, in Jesus' name. Amen. No name. Father, we lift up um, this person and their family, Lord. You know their needs, and I ask that you go before them, behind them, that you would hedge them in, Lord, with a hedge of protection. And Father, we thank you that you will provide every need according to your infinite riches in Christ Jesus. Fill them all with your spirit, Lord, and lead them on the narrow path to the new Jerusalem and heaven eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Yes, Jack, what's the next one? Time's going really quick, so I'm going to jump to my last point. Because yeah, you I said about this. Is this the Ezekiel point? Yeah, in Ezekiel, um, from verse 14, it says, I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I'll bring back the strayed, and I'll bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat, and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. And that's obviously referring a lot to Psalm 23, the same kind of words like pastures and the shepherd. And that is talking about when Jesus returns and restores Israel. And we know that when he restores Israel, he'll restore the whole earth. And that's what we're looking to. That's what, you know, when you're in situations, like you mentioned, the, these worst situations that we, we can't even fathom, we keep looking forwards because we know that our shepherd is returning one day. And there's so many good things here. It says um, that he will give us good grazing land and rich pasture because our lives aren't easy now, but one day they will be. You know, that's why we've got to keep going on. When Jesus returns, the earth will finally be good. You know, he will restore the earth um, to an extent. And it says that um, we'll be able to lie down in verse 15. I myself will make them lie down. We'll finally have rest uh, from all our worries, all our anxieties, all our tribulation. It will finally be over and we'll be able to lie down. And so in verse 15, it, it talks about Jesus restoring us. And in verse 16, it says, I will seek the lost. I'll bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. And a lot of people watching will be injured yeah. in different ways. You know, it'll be emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally, you might just be exhausted, but God will bind up the injured and he will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Justice will eventually come. You know, you spoke of Hitler. There was, even just in the 20th century alone, there were so many evil people, but even on a lower level, you know, there's so many wicked people that don't get in the news. God will bring justice and he'll finally bring a good life to his sheep who have been holding on. I can't wait, Jack. Yeah. I can't wait. You just mentioned a little bit earlier just about keep walking, you know, keep looking forward. And I remember last week you came out with Psalm 9 verse 1 about recounting the things the Lord has done. And it just made me think, sometimes we have a little favourite place, isn't it? We, we like to wander around Dartmoor, talk to the sheep, like, look like a pair of weirdos, but chatting to the sheep, chatting to the ponies, getting lost, doing our map reading, we love it. And mm. sometimes, Jack, you do a good old walk and it's good in the Christian walk, keep, keep going. You know, um, he who looks back is not fit to inherit the kingdom of God, Jesus said. But just now and again, it's good to recount the things the Lord has done. And as we walk around Dartmoor, sometimes you get on the top of a tour somewhere and you've got to look back at the path that you've just taken. And it's good to see where you've just been, just to get a thing, oh, we climbed up that, we conquered that, climbed over that river. And it's good to look back and see what the Lord's done in your life, mm. isn't it, Jack? Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Christina says, I just want to recommend a book that describes living in the fullness of Psalm 23. The title is Life Without Lack, written by Dallas Willard. On the back of, is a resume of a book that says, if you want to know how to live in abundant satisfaction or, or how to actually love somebody or how to spend a day with Jesus or what work consists of or how to die to yourself, there's the key, so that your self might come alive, I can think of no better gift than this glorious unpacking of these grand old words, life without lack. Thanks for an interesting programme from Christina. Thank you, Christina. Jack, um, down to our last five minutes, mate. 
Ah, right, dear Mark and Jack, how fortunate you are to be discussing Father and Son, Psalm 23. Love from the Austins on the Isle of Wight. Good evening, the Austins. Do you know what, guys? Blessed. <laughs> Blessed. Sitting here talking about Psalm 23 with my little son. Uh, Mark and Jack, thank you for your encouragement. Read God's provision, and that's just from N. Thank you, N. God bless you. Um, this is all weird. We're, 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 all, we're all walking wounded, aren't we, Jack? We're all hobbling al along towards the finish line, you know? Yeah. Just keep moving. That's all it is. Keep standing. Keep moving. Um, right, keep going, Jacko. Down to our lot. Got any? Have you got any final short one? We've still got some more text, if you haven't, so we've got, still got some more time. Yes, one really important one in John 10. I said I'd touch on John 10, but we didn't go into detail. Um, in verse 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And we mentioned this briefly, but this is possibly the most important point. And especially if you're not a Christian, if you are wondering what we're all about, this is what we're all about, that our good shepherd is Jesus Christ. You will have heard the name. He laid down his life for us. And if you want to be saved, if you want to have an eternal life, to have your weight of sin removed, to be completely forgiven, whatever you've done, whatever evils you've committed, Jesus can take them away. He laid down his life. Trust in him, in his death, and that God rose him from the dead. And now he's seated at the right hand of God. You can have eternal life. He can be your shepherd as well. Um, he's my shepherd, and it is a blessing. Like my dad, I sleep really well knowing that my life is in God's hands. Um, so please take the free gift um, because it's been offered to you, not just by me, but by God. So, yeah. Brilliant, Jack. I think the only time you do sleep badly is when me and my arse you for a cup of tea and it ruins you. <laughs> I know I crack that same joke every week. <laughs> and I probably will crack it next week as well. Julia says, lovely little text. Dearest Mark and Jack, you're both such a, a comfort to us in these strange times. Love Psalm 23. We are like sheep and just like them, we can stray and wander but we have a shepherd, the Lord Jesus, who hears our voice. You're never alone, are you? Thank you, Julia. Beautiful. He takes us back into his flock. That is why we need to be close to him. Thank you for tonight. Love and shalom. Julia, down to our last two minutes, Jacko. We're flying through them. Evening, dearest brothers. I want to say thank you for this reflection upon my second most favourite psalm. It is a confirmation for me regarding what lovely Jesus is revealing to me even this afternoon. He will guide me on. He is my shepherd, my king, sweet Jesus. Thank you again in him from Karen. Brilliant, Karen. Fantastic. Um, here we go. Alice from Edinburgh. Hi, Mark and Jack. I just adore, I just adore you two and practically cry when I miss your programmes. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I keep hearing pastors on Rev TV saying how we're all going to be with Jesus after death. But what about many are called, few are chosen? Absolutely. Oh, Alice, can't go into election now, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. We've got a programme on that. You yeah, we have that on um, a program. the TV website. And the many that will be cast into the fire as the dead grass from a garden. Do you know what, uh, Alice from Edinburgh, you are right. L literally, I often look at um, funerals and um, especially famous people, etc. And, you know, there's always the words that always off to be, you know, into heaven and we'll, everyone... Not everyone does go to heaven. You have to turn your face towards the Lord in penitence and faith and, and give your life to him. That This is the clarion call. This is, this is, do you know what, if you took nothing from tonight, just take that and what Jack just said. You have to repent of your sin and come into the sheepfold, okay? Don't worry about doing all your good works. As we've said on another programme, you're never going to get there through good works, good deeds, good thoughts. It's, it's curtains for us all because we are all sinners. There is none righteous, no, not one. So, Alice from Edinburgh, I never got through to the end. Um, but basically that, Alice, thank you so much. That is the gist of it. We don't all go to heaven, but you can if you give your life to the Lord. Jack, 10 seconds. Thank you for being here tonight, mate. Thanks. I've loved it. Thank you so much. Guys, I'll be back with you next week. Not sure who with. Jack's away. God bless you. Keep looking up. Your redemption draws nine. God bless you guys. Take care.